G'day folks. Well, I'm just working through a few old units here and I thought I'd start the autopsy of this one. This is the one we had a bit of fun with the Range Rover. This was Brad's um, hobby shop air conditioner for his little hangout room. And he pretty much wore it out. I mean, this thing went through seven years of pretty much hell. It was always kept clean, but it just worked itself to death. It wore the compressor out and couldn't make head pressure. Uh, we got it recovered and it, was still, it still had a full charge of refrigerant in it. The recovery guy used some scales and told us what went into the bottle and it was right. It's just the compressor was worn out and not making head pressure. So, did some evil things to it. We charged it up with compressed air again. Um, I deleted a bit off the capillary tube after we got it just to make sure there was no air left in it. And, uh, well after we killed it. And, um, yes, ran it over with the Range Rover. That was fun. So yeah, this unit was unserviceable when we started and so was that tyre which copped a bit of damage too on there. Just one of those oh shit moments like it wasn't the air conditioner making that sound. It's done damage in there, through there, up through there and it's just torn it out like that. Oh well, as you can see it's just like a raised outline of tread left on it. It's gone. So, let's get into pulling this thing to bits. Well, all I want is the coils for scrap and the compressor, so I've got to try and undo all these screws. That one's already been torn out. <laughs> Should be fairly easy. I hope. Yeah, that fan's copped some abuse. <laughs> it came to a stop as soon as the Range Rover touched it, so I'm guessing the rub marks on this outer ring are what, hit what stopped it. The housing just came down, went punk, and stopped it dead. It didn't move after that. It never moved. All that noise was coming from the compressor. Every bit of it. And that's almost... I mean, if it wasn't so bulky, I'd put it in the wall, on the wall of fame. <laughs> Along with all the other blown up weird shit. I've never seen a coil do that before. And it's pushed it down the bottom here. All oh, that's been crushed down. That loop's been torn open in the corner there, it's just been squished. You could almost set it up in the wall of shame with a cutout of the, the side wall that it got ripped out on there. But it's too big. It can go in the scrap pile. Get to the rest of this thing. Got these big straps across the top. Everything's under tension. <laughs> Okay, the evaporator survived with minimal damage. It's probably still serviceable. But, yeah. I wasn't game to go that far forward. If the coil fell forward and the Range Rover dropped onto it, we'd have to get the jacks out and try and lift it up and clear the unit again. And you can see the blower's been pushed into the bottom of the box. And, yeah. The rest is history. I'll just get this compressor out and we'll do an autopsy on that. We'll cut the top off it and cut the bottom out. Okay, just getting the uh, Fujitsu compressor open. Um, <laughs> surprisingly intact. Definitely gotten warm, but the windings aren't really burnt or discoloured. A bit of residue on it, maybe from me cutting it. Um, metal filings in there from me cutting it as well. There was a measurable amount of oil, maybe three quarters of a cup full of oil still in it. Uh, not burnt, it was a nice crystal clear, almost bluish tint to it like it normally is. Um, Despite running three hours upside down, I think this extended discharge tube is what left, left a bit of oil in it. But it's strange that there's so much in there, but then again it was run right way up for a while, so a lot of it would have returned back to the compressor. So that's the top off. Now I've got to split the case and grind, well, just cut down through these spot welds around the outside so that the pump can come out. That's where the real carnage will be if it, if it is. But it's surprisingly clean and free from dirt and burnt burnt residue, so interesting, considering what torture it went through. It still turns. I'm guessing the reason it didn't restart in the air conditioner was because it was just too much back pressure on it. I mean, that's a little bit clunky, but then again, I've got copper dust and shit going down the intake, so it's probably binding the rotor up. Well, that's the uh, insides of it. Nice and clean. No obvious signs of overheating. 
state is definitely fine. Didn't even nick it with the grinder, it's all intact. Still more oil pouring out of it. Stuck now, but that's because I got grinding dust down inside it. I'll try and break it out of its housing, so I'll ground all the spot welds down. And uh, yeah, strip this compressor head down. If anything, I think the reed valve must have gotten tired. Because uh, this unit stopped performing very well, but it still had a full charge in it. Kind of odd. I'm pretty sure the refrigerant smelt burnt, but the motor hasn't burnt out, so it just isn't happy. Very inter interesting. I'll try and get the rest of this apart. Okay, well I found the failure of this compressor. The vein spring has broken in two. It happened a long time ago. I know I can't zoom in and show you the wear and tear on these broken pieces, but it's been broken for a very long time. Like the bottom part of, it, part of this spring is abraded away. Obviously on the cast iron housing is very abrasive. And it's gotten thin up here and it's just snapped off. It's worn through, broken off, probably a long time ago. It's been run many hundreds of hours after it's broken. Like that's the kind of wear and tear that's on these broken parts, particularly on the bottom of this shattered edge. It's worn down to a point, so it's been running for a good few hundred hours like that. Gradually getting weaker and weaker, and the sliding vein inside here is getting slacker and slacker and making more noise. It's bouncing a lot, probably at critical pressure, and thus the compressor's just not building head pressure. It's not so much that the bearing surfaces in it are worn out, I mean, it didn't run out of oil. Even after being run for three hours upside down to try and kill it, it still wasn't out of oil. After being run over by the Range Rover whilst filled with compressed air, it still didn't lose any oil. It's, yeah, it's just a busted spring. It's like that old Copeland compressor I dismantled. A broken spring mount that the uh, piston pump assembly sits on caused it to lean over and then the discharge line on the muffler broke off after a while. So again it's a spring failure. But we'll still pull the rest of this apart and have a look inside. It's very clean. I can see the rotor. It looks nice. But we'll pop this apart and just see what kind of wears on the rotor, particularly from the vane being undersprung and chattering a lot. Okay, well the reed valve is intact and appears to be working. That's all good. I'd say it's only the vane spring. The oil pump doohickey is still in there. Yeah, there are little bubbles forming around here. Must be refrigerant that's migrated into the bolt holes and it's now trapped. That usually happens. You crack them free and get a little spurt of oil and refrigerant coming out from the bolt, under the bolt heads. So I always wear eye protection, especially when working on one of these. You know, you get shot in the eye by a load of refrigerant and oil. It's nasty. Okay, well it's definitely showing some wear. I believe these are hard chromed, and under that hard chrome is always a layer of copper, electroplating. <laughs> and you can see it clearly showing through there, there's almost a step worn in it. So it wouldn't just be the vein, I think this thing's just been raped hard for the last 10 years or so. Particularly since Brad got it, I mean he'd leave air conditioners running all day, and all night, to the point where ice crystals come flying out of them. I think that did actually happen. He was awoken by the sound of, of chunks of ice breaking off the inside of the uh, evaporator coil and getting chewed up by the blower and spat out of the vent. That's how long this thing ran one night. After the cool change came through, that is. I'll try and get that rotor out. But it is hard chromed and definitely showing it. Yeah, the vein... <laughs> yeah, I've never seen a vein with wear like that on it. I'm going to put that in the Hall of Fame part of the radius. The radius doesn't continue around like they normally do. It's got a flat spot on it with lots of grazes and deep wear. So yeah, this compressor's had, had a hard life. It's not just the vein spring, but the vein spring is why it wouldn't have... Well, it would have significantly increased the amount of noise until it built head pressure and pushed the vein in anyway.
but it also still helps towards the bottom end of the pressure scale, like on a coolish day, this unit wouldn't have done much at all. But yeah, this thing has well and truly had it. I'll try and get that rotor out. Yeah, on the rotor you can almost see a patch where the vane must have been jumping and then hitting it, leaving this score mark down the side of it and then riding it hard all the way around because it's all scored. They're not deep scores, you can barely feel them with your finger. Not even record grooves. But they're just, yeah. A micrometer would tell the tale on this one. Even the inside bearing surface is actually pretty good. But you can definitely see all through this whole housing here, it's rough. All the chrome's gone. The chrome's obviously been spat out into the bloody housing. It must have, it would, that would explain the uh, very fine grey metallic film on the windings of the motor and everything else. That's where the chrome ended up, just as an ultra fine ground film. So that's all gone in there. It's all just down to copper. Well, probably down to steel in a couple of places. If I left it outside long enough, it'd just turn to rust. Yeah, if this isn't chrome plated, then perhaps the copper came from the inside of the coils. Refrigerants are known to be abrasive, uh, particularly things like R600A. Um, yeah, if, if this isn't hard chrome, then that copper obviously came from inside the rest of the unit, but I've never seen build up like that before in a rotary compressor. Even the highest mileage compressor does not have this sort of wear and tear on it. Now, you know what, although I've seen some compressors with hard chroming on surfaces, I think this copper has actually come from inside the coils. It's the only thing that would explain it. Actually a bit of rust on there too. Where is it? No, that's Cast Alley. How could that have rust on it? That's odd. It's all speckly. But yeah, I think it might have come through the coils. The whole inside of it is just plated. It looks like a piece of copper pipe inside there. Not a lining or anything, there's no bearing shell. That's weird. Definitely had a hard life though. Doesn't come off. It's been impregnated into the steel by the rotor. Either than that or it's an anti-wear film, but I don't know why they'd do that. Could be an anti-wear film, could be spatter like a an, an, on a uh, nano level spatter effect sprayed on burned in, whatever. Unusual. I always know what the original failure mode was. That's this little spring here. That's its first failure mode. Um, yeah, getting run upside down obviously didn't do too much to it. The oil smells and looks perfectly good. There's no burnt smell to it. I don't think it passed an acid test, but it's uh, not exactly burnt in the motor either. That motor would probably still work. I banged the rotor when I was breaking it out of the housing, that's my damage. But that's about it. I'm going to chuck this aside and just keep it for the time being. I think Brad will want to see it since it was his air conditioner. And that's all the rotor does really. you got the vane inside there. And as it comes around, sorry it goes that way. Suction gas comes through here and fills this chamber. Now at this point it's closed off the intake or the suction side and it's starting to compress it. And on the other side of this plate here is a reed valve. So that goes on there. And on the discharge side, yeah, as it comes around, I think that would go on the underside actually. That'd sit on the bottom. As it comes around, it just that vein's obviously sitting out there. Squeezes it down there and compresses it out through that. It's really straightforward. Like that with that spring in place of course. Only thing holding that spring in is the outer shell of the compressor. As soon as I started wiping the oil off it, it just flew out and fell on the floor down there. I was lucky to find it. If I didn't find it, I probably wouldn't be able to figure out the failure mode. I'd still be scratching my head. So don't lose even the most mundane of things when you're pulling a compressor apart. Something as simple as that can cause a lot of headache. Thanks for watching. It's been a good compressor autopsy. Next up in line, a slot machine. Yep, I found a junk slot machine to pull to bits. Thanks for watching.